everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be trying to tackle my physical TBR, but only in the genre of classics because I'm not that big of a classics reader, but I've always been intrigued to read the classics. They are classics for a reason, so I want to read them and know why they're classics. And that's probably why I have here a couple of classics on my physical TBR that have been on my physical TBR for a year, two years, and I have not even touched them at all. They have been on my TBR for too long, and I need to start reading them a little bit. I think I haven't picked any single one of these classics up because I tend to get a bit intimidated by classics. I feel like it'll either be too boring, too slow, I won't understand something and I want to get through my physical TBR so bad and these have just been sitting there staring at me and I feel like it's finally time to at least pick a few of these up. I did a huge unhaul of books last summer so my physical TBR is actually not very big because I only saved books that I had already read and that I loved and then books that I was still wanting to read and these are all the classics that came out of that whole unhaul process. So these are all the classics that I am interested in reading. Of course there are more, but I don't have them physically. We'll definitely not be reading every single one of these. I'll kind of go through what is in this pile with you guys and then tell you which one I'll start with. So I have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, Emma by Jane Austen. I've watched the movie of it, the one with Anya Taylor-Joy. That was quite long ago though, so I actually don't remember the plot, so I actually wouldn't mind picking this up. There's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. There's Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, and also Little Woman by Louisa M. Alcott. This one, I also watched both movies, and I actually don't think this is the full version. Just look at how small it is. I think this is only like part one or something. So if I were to read this, I would have to get the other ones to... I don't actually know, but anyway. So those are all the classics on my physical TBR. And I'm using this video to hold me accountable to actually start getting through some of these because these have just... I'm gonna tell you, these have been sitting on my TBR for so long and I just wanna get through my physical TBR. It's not fun to just have books that are sitting for so long. And the more they sit there, the more I don't wanna pick them up. So I just need to bite the bullet and pick one of these up who cares if it's like a little bit of slow read or maybe I will like it. The one that I've actually been eyeing the most out of all of these books is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I've heard a lot of things about this. Genuinely, I don't know a lot about the plot in any of these classics. I just know them because they are classics. I just know names of a lot of classics because they're referenced to in so many other books I've read. Jane Eyre is the one that I have been intrigued about a lot. I've seen some videos on it, but I really don't even remember what I was intrigued about. But I think I'm just gonna kind of go in blind and start reading and hopefully I'll like it. And of course, once I know what it's about, I'll come to you guys. I think this was more of like a romance-ish type of classic. I think this was tagged as a romance. I don't know how many books I'm gonna end up reading in this video. I'm kind of just gonna be picking and choosing from this pile so you guys can kind of guess which ones I will end up choosing. I'll probably end up making more videos of reading all of them. I want to know my opinions on popular classics and you can only do that if you read the book. So I'm gonna start with Jane Eyre. Yeah I'll tell you guys more about it when I'm actually in the middle of reading it. Hi guys, I started reading Jane Eyre and I got 70 pages in, in one sitting, which is amazing. So yeah, the book is off to a really good start. It wasn't confusing at all, which I'm super happy about. The writing was not difficult to understand at all. The story is really not difficult to understand at all. Of course, there are some words that are not that used anymore today or that are a little bit more advanced, but I can always use Google to search up the words, but like the whole story 
in and of itself is very easy to understand, which I'm super happy about because, again, I had the assumption that classics can be a little bit hard to understand and kind of hard to get into. This book follows Jane and she is an orphan and she's now living with her aunt and her cousins, but they don't really like her that much. They think that she is a child who is not well behaved and that she lies and is a trickster, which I wouldn't say is true. She's definitely getting a little bit mistreated by her cousins and her aunt and this just follows Jane Eyre's life, I'm pretty sure, at least now. We are following her and she is 10 at the start of this book. I'm sure that she'll probably grow up during the span of this book. I don't really know yet because of course I haven't read it yet. But as of right now, it's a very interesting story to read and just the fact that I got into it right away just made me happy and it wasn't difficult to understand, like I said. And I really like Jane's point of view. Her monologue is just very interesting to read and the writing is obviously amazing. It's a cute and interesting story as of now, but overall just very happy that my assumption that classics can be a little bit of a slog and hard to understand and hard to get into was wrong, proven wrong with this book. I'm very eager to continue. Those are my initial thoughts right now, very positive and I'm super happy about that. Hi guys, I'm back with an update. If the video looks a little bit different or the quality or the sound, it's because I'm using a different camera right now. I'm not using my phone like I have in the past clips. So just keep that in mind if the clips kind of look different from each other. I am just wanting to test this camera out a little bit, but I am now what, like 200 pages into the book nearly. So I'm already read that much. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. What I think I really like about it is Jane's character. She's super curious and she's always asking questions and she gets into these interesting conversations with people and then those conversations are really fun to read. And I also like the dialogue in this book is just done very well. Some of the dialogue can be a little bit confusing at times, like the last time she spoke with Mr. Rochester was a little bit confusing. I was not sure about all the words, all the sentences that they were saying, but honestly nothing confusing enough to take away from the reading experience and that was just like a very small interaction and I was just confused about one part of it, but I tried to kind of reread it, but I don't know if it really went in my head. And there are some great quotes and lines in here already. Yeah, that's my update on the book. I am actually really really liking it just because I like Jane's character so much and her thought process is just intriguing. I have actually gotten a pretty good chunk done in two days, which I'm surprised about again because I had the assumption that reading classics would be slow for me, but I'm already a third of the way through and I'm having a good time. But yeah, I'm very much into the book and looking forward to reading more of it. Hi guys, I haven't updated in a couple of days and I did cut my hair but I'm here with another update because I have things to say. I was honestly starting to even get a little bit bored with the book just because my feelings were not developing into anything more. They were just kind of always staying the same. I was enjoying it but I wasn't loving it so I didn't have anything to say but I just finished chapter 27 last night which puts me at page 460 and that chapter was so good. When I read it, I teared up a little bit, not because I was sad, but just because it made me so emotional because I was so invested in the characters and what was gonna happen to them and their relationship. And the writing was so good. I mean, the writing has been good this entire book, but I feel like especially in these the last couple of chapters, I definitely noticed it the way Charlotte Bronte writes how Jane is feeling, describes her emotions and what she's going through is extremely stunning. Rooting for Jane, but also questioning why she's doing what she's doing, but also understanding her. 
and that just stirred up my emotions even more and made me love this book even more and there's still what a little less than 200 pages to go so i really don't know what to expect but i'm hoping that the last 200 pages will be just as good as the last couple of chapters have been well, i don't know what to expect at all from this anymore but i'm very much looking forward to continuing it because now i'm honestly loving this book which i was not expecting i'm gonna go read more and hopefully my feelings stay the same or get even better Hi guys, it's been a couple of days since my last update, but I did end up finishing Jane Eyre about two hours ago, and I haven't even really given it a definitive rating yet, but I will give you guys my thoughts. I'll probably just have the rating somewhere on the screen, just because I feel like I need to sit on it a bit. So in my last update, I was really excited and into the book finally, or there was that moment where I really felt emotions and I was really attached to it. But sad to say, after that chapter, it just kind of continued on the same wavelength that it's been the whole start of the book. So honestly, a little bit boring. After that chapter, I was not hooked anymore as much as I was for those couple of chapters. I kept reading it but also at the same time, always looking at how many pages was left. It honestly became very boring and very long for me. I loved some aspects of it, but I feel like there was so much stuff in here and everything is explained in such length. And honestly, all I cared about was Jane and Mr. Rochester. I didn't care about anything else, like any filler. And I was bored. I was bored by the end of this. And even the ending. I like the ending, but it wasn't that crazy. The ending didn't produce any sort of feelings inside of me. And by the end of it, I was happy that it was over because I was bored and honestly done with the story. Like, I didn't care anymore. That is so sad to say, <laughs> but it's not necessarily bad. I really liked Jane's character. I loved how she was written and I loved Jane's and Mr. Rochester's dynamic so much and the dialogue again in this book was amazing but like I said for me it definitely felt like a bit of a slog at points there are a couple of chapters where I was really into it and very invested but then multiple chapters where I was honestly not bored but just reading it and not really getting anything out of it well yeah bored I guess so I don't really know what to give it. I don't think it was a bad classic. I can see why people, some people really like it and I'm glad that I did read it. I mean, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed parts of it, but the fact that I was a little bit bored while reading it and that it just started to feel so long, like it is a long book, it is 650 pages. So by the end I was like, when will this end? <laughs> No, by the end, I was happy to have finished it and happy to just say, yeah, I read Jane Eyre next. So that's it. I don't know what I'm going to give it. Probably a 3 to a 3.5. Probably a 3.5, honestly, because I do really, really enjoy Jane's character and the dialogue and some themes it explored and Mr. Rochester's and Jane's dynamic and the writing, of course. The writing is beautiful. And as a story overall, I really did enjoy it when I look back. It's honestly a kind of a fun classic. Jane's character is funny in a way. Jane is an honest queen and I love her for that. I don't hate this book at all. I appreciate it for what it is, but definitely a bit of a slog in the end. But I did still enjoy it and there are some great things I love about it. But we're gonna choose my next read, so another classic. For the next classic, I have chosen Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert because I've heard so much about this. I don't remember in what book it was, but there was a book that I read in which the main character continuously quoted Madame Bovary and was like constantly rereading it. I don't remember what it was. I might put it here if I find out, but because that character kept 
rereading Madame Bovary, I was like, I want to read Madame Bovary and know what all the hype is about. I don't even remember what character that was or what book, but I specifically remember her reading Madame Bovary as a comfort. So I really don't know anything about this. Again, I just have these books because I know they're classics, but could I tell you anything about them? Not really. But this is originally a French book, but I have it here translated in English. I'll come back to you guys once I've started this book and once I know a little bit more about it so that I can tell you guys a little bit about the plot and what it's about. I have not updated in probably a week because I did end up starting this, but it took me so long to get into it. It put me in like a mini reading slump. I did not feel like picking this book up at all, but I have now made it to about 50 pages. And I think I'm finally starting to get into the story. The first 40 pages, I don't know why, but I was totally uninterested. I don't think I was absorbing a lot that was happening. It was mostly just set up and introducing the characters. At first it followed Charles, who is this doctor, and it kind of went over his life pretty briefly and his wife died, so he remarries literally right away. He remarries another woman right after his wife dies, and he marries this girl named Emma, who is the now Madame Bovary. So the whole setup part with Charles, the husband, was super slow for me. Like, I did not care at all. I was reading it, and I was so uninterested, but... Yesterday, I got to page 40, and from that page, it starts focusing more on Emma, his new wife. And ever since then, I've got it into the story a lot more, and I'm actually beginning to like the story. Emma, so Madame Bovary, is actually regretting her marriage with Charles already. She does not really like her life in the countryside, I believe. A very quiet life, and she really wants excitement and romance. So we're kind of going through her head as she basically regrets her life decisions, but also dreams about something more. But I'm only 50 pages into it, but I'm finally starting to like it more when the focus is on Madame Bovary instead of Charles, because I did not care about him at all. But I am more hopeful about it now and eager to pick it up as well, so. That's a good sign because I literally did not want to pick this book up at all the past week. That's why I've been so slow reading it, but I feel like I'm finally kind of intrigued. That was a kind of mini update. Again, I'm only 50 pages in, so I can't really say too much about my opinions because I've only just started to be a little bit more interested in the story. But I'm gonna go read some more and of course come back with updates. Hi guys, I'm back. It's been, I think, over a week since I last updated and I haven't been giving consistent updates on the book, but I did end up finishing it a couple of days ago and I'm here with my final review. I ended up giving this one a four stars, which means I really did enjoy it. It definitely was a bit of a slower read for me. It took me a couple of weeks and I feel like it took me more time to read this one than it took me to read Jane Eyre, and Jane Eyre is twice as long. So I don't really know the reason why I was so slow with reading this. I feel like I was just a bit busier and I just didn't have that reading mood, and that's totally okay. A little bit of a slower read, but the story itself and what this book is trying to say made it so good for me to give it a four stars so the fact that it was a little bit slow in some parts for me doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things i really really liked what this book dealt with it kind of showcased a woman's experience in the 1800s so again emma is unhappy in her marriage and she is trying to find all these ways in which she can feel freedom and happiness. She would love to be in Paris, being in all these lavish parties, having a lot of luxury around her romance, but she is living in the countryside in a marriage that she 
doesn't love she doesn't love her husband so she's bored she's bored with her life and i really liked how it was described how emma's emotions and what she was growing going through was described i feel like the main point of this book is to show what limits there were to a woman's freedom in the 1800s she couldn't just do anything that she wanted that's why she had to be kind of sneaky in her ways to do something with her life she searched for things outside of herself to feel happy and to try to find freedom i loved to see what emma was going through and i thought the writing was very very good emma was definitely dealing with a lot of things and having to find other ways in which she could bring sense into her life and one reason i do like classics is because it does give you a glimpse into what life was like back in the days because this can definitely be a real portrayal of some woman's experience in the 1800s not every woman's experience but definitely some yeah it's very interesting to see the differences in our society nowadays so yeah, a very good read. I enjoyed it a lot and I'm super happy that I finally read it. Also on the topic of me saying that I have a book in which the main character talks about this book, Madame Bovary, I could not find that book for the life of me. I don't know if I just made that up, if I hallucinated it or something. I don't know which book I was talking about. I think it could have been Baby Love by Jacqueline Wilson in case you were wondering that but i'm not sure and i can't fact check it but i swear there was some book in which madame bovary was mentioned multiple times but classics are usually mentioned in a lot of books just because they're classics that was just a little side note i didn't really end up finding the book that i was talking about i do definitely understand why that main character in that book like this book so much. It's a very interesting book, definitely a character study, and I love character studies, so I really do recommend this classic. And it is pretty easy to read, but it can be slow at times, just because in many classics, they talk a lot about the side characters as well and kind of go into their lives, which, to be honest, I'm not that interested in. But when the main focus is on Emma, I was very hooked. But I think I'm going to end the video here because I don't really feel like picking up another classic right now. I want to read some fast-paced modern literature a little bit now. Two classics in a row I think is my limit for now, but I will definitely come back to reading them because I do want to finish my classics physical TBR. So there probably will end up being a part two to this video, but I will stop this specific video here and move on to other genres, move on to other books, but I'm definitely glad that I finally started reading some of these classics and both of the classics were actually really really good. I didn't have a bad experience with either of them so I do recommend both of them if any of them sound interesting to you. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye!